of the municipality of the County of Kings. My name is Deputy Mayor Emily Lutz. I generally chair the uh, Committee of the Whole Meetings here at the municipality. I'm happy to be with you all this morning. Um, some councillors are missing today. Um, we will make that formal when we take roll call. Um, we do have an agenda beginning at 9 a.m. We also have a special council which will follow our um, Committee of the Whole agenda. So we're in for a good morning. Uh, we'll begin this morning by taking roll call. For those new to council, listening online, watching, uh, there's a 10 second delay from when our electronic voting pin pads uh, allow us to register a vote and the time that it appears on the screens in front of us. So uh, if you're wondering why we're pausing, it is simply to make sure those votes are registering. Uh, we have regrets from two councillors this morning, both of whom had conflicts with the meeting today, Councillor Meisner and Councillor Hurdle, looking for a motion to excuse Councillor Meisner and Councillor Hurdle. Moved by Councillor Granger, seconded by Councillor Allen. Discussion on the motion to excuse? Seeing none, all in favor or otherwise, please signify in the usual fashion. The motion carries unanimously. Thank you, Council. Uh, our item two this morning is approval of the agenda. I'm looking for a motion to approve the agenda as presented. Moved by Mayor Matart, seconded by Councilor Allen. Discussion on the agenda this morning. Additions, deletions, comments, concerns. Seeing none, all in favor or otherwise, please signify in the usual fashion. The agenda is approved. Item three, disclosure of conflict of interest issues. At this time, I invite counselors to disclose any items that they may find themselves in conflict with on the agenda this morning. No counselor finds themselves in conflict with any of the agenda items. Uh, next, approval of the minutes, April 18th, 2023. I'd like a motion to approve the minutes. Moved by Councilor Granger, seconded by Councilor Harding. Uh, comments on the minutes. Seeing none, all in favor or otherwise, please signify in the usual fashion. Motion carries unanimously. Thank you, Council. And any business arising from the minutes of April 18th? Are there any items of business arising from those minutes? Okay, seeing none, we will move along to item six, presentations. Um, our first item is 6A, a reading of Gaelic Month 2023 proclamation in Gaelic. I believe we have uh, Dana McClellan, McLennan, apologies, McLennan in the audience this morning if you wanna come on up to the podium. Um, when this item first came before us, I made a joke that Mayor Matar would be reading the proclamation and then it no longer was funny when I realized I was chairing the meeting. So um, I'm very grateful that you're with us this morning. Do you mind giving us a brief introduction of yourself before sure. you uh, before we dive in? Uh, my name is Roderick Dana McLennan. I originally grew up in Cape Breton in a town called South Bar. Uh, my Gaelic actually comes from my grandfather, my father's side. It was his first language. And my grandmother on my mother's side it was her first language. So we were always hearing it around home. Uh, we were listening to radio shows, things like this here. So it wasn't until I moved here to the Valley to start work with Michelin, I was actually taking a night school class in Kentville with uh, Merdina McRae, who was from the Isle of Lewis. And she was continuing on with the Gaelic that we had had from before. And then I was going to the Gaelic College back in Cape Breton. So there's not many of us that are still around in the area here. So uh, it's great for me to be able to get out and let people hear a little bit of it. We're so happy you're here. Thank you. Um, so you can take it away if you like. Okay. Mees na geil. Sech gun konrik fiket se fiket se tri en sech gaif kjandvlina er iket do wees na geil. Heine aan goos jektri kultur kanen is art njovernen na geil. Hanne moronak is na gurietri a gluk av onrochug is gleigug 
agus seachgu vel kurtur na gael na fárst vúngantach do ién áine na alapanua. Is se fír ye na kultúrin no chúsanach na abutrai a chunig aon an tír mechmach. Agus seachgu vi gínlich úr do luch jónsachí na chainan agus súan kultúrul a chumul úra is yet wanton gut lu regilev na fainach a gius ich a galic on glun an alapanua. A gashak of el and realtis and gelevi a ho oprak le comer snacht den gelok gustach a hush the hutrum yonsachi aitrik savarshin a viagian of kinchuk gusurvik leshagalic is a hulcher aon and kahrag municipality of the county of kings. Marshin, Hamisha Peter Murthard, Mayor and Municipality of the County of Kings, Agia Machachin, Figit Safix the Three, Navis Rana Gale, and Ankahrahuk, Municipality of the County of Kings. Papa Life, Sultan Shigalik. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for being here this morning. That's. I lost my agenda. Um, should we read it in English as well? Is it, do I have an English? I don't even have an English copy, so I'm, yeah, I don't have an English copy, so uh, it is, uh, it's online, and uh, really appreciate uh, Mr. McLennan coming in this morning and, and doing that for us. Um, I don't believe there's any motions to come out of that. Mayor Matart, you have a comment? I, I would uh, just like to put a plug in for Google Translate to, uh, I inquired of, uh, a few days ago, and I'm awfully f glad that this gentleman has come here to do this in Gaelic because, well, first of all, I was very surprised to see that there was a translation from Gaelic available on Google. Secondly, I wasn't all that surprised that it wasn't literally a uh, word-for-word translation, so you it would have been stumbling to try to do it in English, I can tell you that. So our thanks to the gentleman, and uh, we have published it in English online, have we? Uh, yeah, we can do that. If not, yeah. we, sh we yeah. should, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. And it was in our last council package as well, in, in both English and Gaelic. Um, thank you, Mayor. And Mr. McClellan. McClellan. Um, Next, we have the Halls Harbor Community Development Association. Are you folks entirely gathered, or would you like us to wait until you have everyone here? Oh, Councillor Killam has a comment. Uh, yes, uh, planning to be here at 9.30 as, as uh, scheduled on the agenda. Okay, perfect. We will zip right along and come back at 9.30. Okay. Um, so next is item seven, a proclamation request. Pride Month 2023, we're going to invite uh, Kenya Fife, Inclusive Communities Summer Intern. Um, you're back with us again for a second summer. Please, uh, please come on up and welcome. It's good to see you again. It's lovely to be here again. Um, hi, folks. Um, my name is Kenya, as we discussed before. Um, I use she, they pronouns, and I am the Inclusive Communities intern this summer again. I'm so happy and lucky to be back. Um, so today we'll be presenting the proclamation request for the Pride Month, for Pride Month 2023. And so section four of the proclamation policy states that it is the policy of the council to consider proclamation requests to proclaim certain causes when such proclamation positively, positively impacts the community. Historically, pride gatherings emerged from the first large scale protests for 2S LGBTQI rights. In Canada, the first demonstration took place in Ottawa and Vancouver in 1971. By 1973, pride events were held in several Canadian cities, including Montreal, Ottawa, Saskatoon, Toronto, Vancouver, and Winnipeg. Toronto's first, Toronto's pride weekend in June is now amongst the largest pride events in North America. Official recognition of Pride Month is an important action in increasing public awareness and support of 2S LGBTQI communities and cultural diversity within the municipality. Municipal staff consider the approval of the proclamation of Pride Month in the municipality of the County of Kings and as an initiative that will strengthen 
relationship with the municipality and diverse communities, build public trust and improve collaboration and contribute contribution <laughs> to belonging and the achieving of the municipality's vision of being a community of communities where all people belong. The recommendation is that the Committee of the Whole recommend Municipal Council to proclaim June 2023 as Pride Month in the Municipality of the Kings. Um, there are no financial implications and the strategic plan aligns with the strategy for belonging and a strong communities pillar. Um, the alternatives are that Municipal Council may not choose to pr proclaim June as Pride Month. And this will be implemented by publishing the proclamation to the municipality's website and social media platforms. Thank you. Um, are there any questions of our presenter this morning? Um, does anyone wish to make the motion? Moved by Councillor Armstrong. Seconded by Councillor Allen. Any discussion on the motion that we proclaim June 2023 Pride Month in the municipality of the County of Kings? Seeing none, all in favor or otherwise, please signify now. And to speak a little bit about the structure of these motions, of course, we're at Committee of the Whole. Many of the items we discuss here are recommended to Council, which is our first meeting of the month on the first Tuesday. And so we have an opportunity to discuss and debate items today. Um, and then they become formalized at our official meeting of Council, which is the first Tuesday of the month at 6 p.m. Um, thank you, Kenya. Are you, oh, we have Grayson coming to do the next one. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much for being with us this morning. Thank you so much. Okay, Grayson, come on up to the podium. Welcome. Grayson is our diversity and inclusion specialist for those who aren't aware. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Um, as Emily, or uh, as Deputy Mayor Lutz just mentioned, my name is Grayson Parker. I'm the Diversity Specialist. Um, and I am here with a proclamation request for Indigenous History Month um, happening next month. This request originates from the Strategy of Belonging and Proclamations Policy COM 02 003. Um, the intent is to present this proclamation request to the Committee of Whole, Committee of the Whole, for consideration and recommendation that municipal, to Municipal Council for adoption in accordance with the municipality's proclamation policy. The municipality of the County of Kings is located on the land of Mi'kmaq, the territory of the Mi'kmaq peoples. As acknowledged in the strategy for belonging, these territories are covered by the Treaties of Peace and Friendship, which Mi'kmaq peoples first signed with the British Crown in 1726. These treaties did not deal with the surrender of lands and resources, but in fact recognized the Mi'kmaq title and established the rules for what was going to be an ongoing relationship between nations. Further, while there are distinct communities with their own governance, the municipality's geographic boundaries encompass both Annapolis Valley First Nation and Gloose Cap First Nation, as well as a diverse urban and rural indigenous population. This, pro this proclamation of National Indigenous, uh, National indigenous History Month is an important action toward truth and reconciliation. The official recognition aligns with the strategy for belongings lens, reconciliation, and Mi'kmaq treaty rights. By acknowledging the history, culture, accomplishments, and sacrifices that have been made by First Nation, Inuit, and Métis people across our municipality, province, and across Canada. For non-Indigenous community members, this month is also an opportunity to recognize the role Indigenous people have played in shaping our country. A draft of the proclamation is included in this package. There are no financial implications for this proclamation. And this proclamation aligns with the strategy for belonging, specifically strong communities. Uh, for implementation, we are going to publish the proclamation on the municipality's website and social media platforms and hold a lunch and learn opportunity for staff. For engagement, um, like I said, uh, posting the proclamation on the website and social media and the lunch and learn opportunity for staff. So the alternative is that council may opt to not proclaim uh, June as Indigenous History Month. And our recommendation is that the Committee of the Whole 
um, sorry, the Committee of the Whole recommend that Municipal Council proclaim June 2023 as National Indigenous Month in the Municipality of the County of Kings. Thank you very much. Are there any questions this morning of the presenter? Okay, I don't see any. Any other things before we look for a motion? Okay, moved by Councilor Harding, seconded by Mayor Matart. Any further discussion on this motion? Seeing none, all in favor or otherwise, please signify now. And um, Councilor Killam, did you intend to vote on this issue? Okay, uh, we'll register that as a positive. <laughs> okay, uh, motion carries unanimously, thank you. Thank, thank, you. thank you for presentation. Uh, next up, we have Deputy CAO Rob Frost uh, here to present on item 7C, addition to reserve for Glue Scott First Nation. Um, Deputy CAO, welcome to Committee of the Whole. Welcome to the podium. Thank you, Deputy Mayor, and good morning. Uh, so I'm here this morning to present uh, regarding an addition to reserve for Glue Scott First Nation. So first I'd like to begin by, uh, in the spirit of truth and reconciliation, because it's necessary that truth comes before reconciliation, that I'd like to acknowledge that the system and language around the land reserves provided to First Nations is a settler government created process that continues to perpetuate systemic issues. So there's language that I'll need to use today that is, um, because it is statutory de definition and legal standard rooted in legislation, but is not language endorsed by First Nations and a reminder that we are all treaty people. So the background, we received correspondence uh, from Indigenous Services Canada dated April 14th, 2023, regarding a proposed addition to the re reserve for Glooscap First Nation. There's three parcels of the land proposed to be added uh, to the Glooscap First Nation community, which total 52.81 uh, acres in size. Two are currently owned by Glooscap First Nation, and one is by the federal government, which I'll show you on the map here in a minute. Three properties are valued as either exempt resource or exempt forestry resource, and the annual taxation totals $5 for all three properties. So this is the uh, aerial of the Glues Cap First Nation community. The three parcels in question are on the kind of right side. Is there a pointer on this thing? I think there is. I don't want to do it though. Um, so the, the two that, uh, are, there's three highlighted in red. Two of them show as green, which are owned by uh, the Glues Cap First Nation community. And the other one in, in red that is owned by the federal government. This is, in, just so you're familiar, the the uh, former Hansport West Hans Water Treatment Facility is just across the road uh, on this road. So there's a process for when there's an addition to reserves. So initiation, the First Nation submits a band council resolution and an addition to reserve proposal to the Indigenous Services Canada Regional Office. There's an assessment and review process where Indigenous Services Canada reviews the proposal and advises the First Nation in writing of the results, issuing a letter of support to First Nations for successful proposals. Currently in this stage where um, municipalities are being consulted and other stakeholders are consulted. Proposal completion, so ISC and the First Nations complete and execute a work plan to complete all technical components, which might include, include surveys addressing third party interests, duty to consult municipal service agreements, etc. So in this case, just to be clear too, we would not have any municipal service agreements in this area, whereas West Hans may due to water considerations. And then lastly, approval, the Minister of Crown Indigenous Relations and Northern Affairs approves proposals by the ministerial order. And just a very important point, so while local government must be consulted uh, regarding an addition to reserve, um, there's no general unilateral veto with respect to a reserve proposal. So with that, I'd certainly take questions, but provide the recommendation that Committee of the Whole recommend Municipal Council direct the Mayor to respond to the correspondence from Indigenous Service Canada, expressing the complete support of the Municipality of the County of Kings for the proposed addition to reserve. Thank you, Rob, for your presentation. Uh, any questions on the presentation this morning? 
relatively straightforward. Um, seeing no questions or comments, looking for a motion. Um, the Committee of the Whole recommend that Municipal Council direct the Mayor to respond to the correspondence from Indigenous Services Canada, expressing the complete support of the municipality to the County of Kings for the proposed addition to the reserve. Moved by Councilor Armstrong, seconded by Councilor Granger. Discussion on the motion. Seeing none, all in favor or otherwise, please indicate in the usual fashion. Thank you, Rob, for your presentation this morning. And while we wait for the results of the vote, um, so for those of you who've joined us, uh, we do have a 10 second delay between when our votes are registered and when they show up on our screen. So that's why we keep pausing in between our motions. Um, we do have an audience. I know you folks were scheduled at 9.30. Would you like to begin now or should we wait the, the 10 more minutes? It's up to you. Yeah, go now? Okay, then welcome. Uh, we have the Halls Harbor uh, Community Development Association here with us this morning. So welcome to all of you. Um, they're here to present on the Waterfront Climate Change Initiative. Uh, we have several folks in attendance. Uh, Daniel Houghton, um, Madonna Spinazzola, who is no stranger to council chambers as a former councillor um, several times, Dave Davies, Bernard Miles, Glenn Bissex, um, and others, it seems. So welcome to all of you, and thank you for joining us this morning. I'll turn the, uh, the podium on for you there, and uh, you're set to go. Sure, thank you. Just uh, instructions on this, is just to switch the slides, is it the arrow? Red one. The red one. All right. Just give me one second, I'll pull up my notes. Okay, good morning everyone. Good morning. Thank you very much for agreeing to let us make this presentation to you this morning. Uh, my name is Daniel Houghton, and I'm extremely humbled to be here this morning, being from Kenful, Nova Scotia. I'm here representing the Halls Harbor Community Development Association, or more commonly referred to as the HHCDA, as well as Engineering by Houghton, uh, the engineering consulting team that uh, the HHCDA is engaged to help them navigate some of the challenges being faced by our harbor. Um, so today we want to talk about the impacts of climate change on our beloved Halls Harbor and the collaborative steps uh, that the HHCDA are taking to safeguard its future. So we're going to embark on this journey together and it's going to start, if I get this right, with some videos that uh, were pre-done um, that will give you a great background on, on Halls Harbor and some of the initiatives that we've done so far. Halls Harbor, a place where treasures and tides meet. A beautiful coastal community on the shores of the Bay of Fundy. These quaint shorelines have a deep-rooted history dating back to the 1800s. When visiting Halls Harbor, there are many things you can see and do. You can enjoy a delicious meal at the Lobster Pound restaurant and gift shop, sure to be a favorite memory for you and your taste buds. The Lobster Pound restaurant, voted best lobster in the world by the Ottawa Post. Take a step back in time in one of Canada's oldest general stores from over 120 years ago. The general store contains work from over 24 different local artists. This store has all its original 1800s charm. Bring the family to stroll the stunning coastlines where the world's highest tides come and go. Maybe even find your favorite rock and see who can toss it the furthest into the ocean. On a hot day, cool down at Sea Cones, where the kids will enjoy ordering ice cream direct from a fishing vessel. How about learning about the folklore and mystery of the area on one of many different evening guided ghost walks? Wishing you can stay for more than a few hours? Then book your stay at one of nine local B&Bs. Stay for a night and take in the breathtaking starlit skies. The next morning, start your day with a two minute drive just outside of Halls Harbor and enjoy Huntington Point where you can see the unique, colorful fairy tale stone stone homes. Looking for more of an adventure? Explore the scenic coastal drive along the North Mountain, where you can be on a hiking adventure to Cape Split, only 30 minutes away. On your way back, stop for a bite to eat at the Long Table Social Club, or taste local beer at the Sea Level Brewery. Then, finish your time with us back at Halls Harbor for a stunning ocean-dipped sunset. Halls Harbor, 
where treasures and tides collide. Plan your visit at discoverhallsharbor.com. Over 32 years as a summer resident of Halls Harbor, I have witnessed how damaging the severe storms and rising tides can be to this place. Climate change is with us already, and, and the storms are getting bigger, they're more frequent, and they're more damaging. And Halls Harbor has had more than its fair share of damaging storms. So we need to take steps now to protect not just Halls Harbor, but the fishing industry and our food security. And uh, that way we'll, we'll have a, a viable community way into the future. Yeah, so Hulls Harbor um, approached me about a, you know, an extension and shoreline protection project for the wharf, uh, the existing wharf. And uh, one, of the, one of the things that kind of came up for us right off the bat was we didn't want to spend uh, good money on top of bad. So what started off as uh, you know, a shoreline protection um, project, you know, developed into into what you've seen in the renderings now, and, and some of the drivers of that is that uh, you know we, we have a lot of data available now that suggests um, what's going to happen with the sea level um, rise. You know, combine that with, uh, with with the storm surge and wave run up, and uh, you know we want to uh, you know build for the future, so to speak, and. Um, right now we're designing and, and looking at, uh, at models that are in the year 2100. So, you know, the, the wharf uh, expansion and shoreline protection project, um, the scope of, of that, you know, has grown as we try to incorporate as many of these future challenges as possible. Um, meanwhile, maintaining, um, you know, the charm and, and picturesque community that Halls Harbor is right now. 1995, my family moved here to start a uh, live lobster export business and the lobsters from the Bay of Fundy were extremely valuable in that because of their quality and um, the seasons that the lobsters have fished here is really advantageous to uh, bridging the gap between uh, periods of time where there's no lobsters available in other parts of uh, Nova Scotia. So, um, Halls Harbor has been extremely important to us. Um, and extremely important to the local residents and the people that we employ that are mostly uh, local people from the area. Um, the restaurant uh, is seasonal. It operates here uh, at Halls Harbor. We employ between 35 and 40 people on a, on a uh, six month basis and um, it's become very valuable to them as well. Halls Harbor is the uh, s safest harbor well, from here to, uh, there is a harbor down below here, Harborville, but uh, Halls Harbor is the safest harbor from, from Harborville up or Digby. And uh, this is the only uh, harbor that has a, uh, uh, Coast Guard Auxiliary. And we get uh, probably uh, 10, 12 calls a year for broke down boats or people stuck on rocks and boats in trouble or, or whatever. And uh, so it's uh, and it's a it's a safe harbor. It's uh, like the, the wind doesn't once you're in here the you know the the wind you're pretty well protected. The Halls Harbor Community Development Association is undertaking a project to revitalize and ensure the sustainability of our harbor. We are asking you to help us see this through. Your donations and financial support will help us ensure that future generations enjoy this harbor as we do today. Your supporting this project is investing in your community, in our community, and ensuring that it will go forward into the future. We are looking to protect our community from climate change and also ensure that economically it's sustainable. Halls Harbor has the potential to be a premier destination in Nova Scotia and we really want you to be part of that. 
Our climate change mitigation plan must start now. With your generous support, the benefits of this plan will take us into the next 80 years. A truly meaningful contribution for all of Nova Scotia. Thank you. Thank you. I love those videos, um, except for the part where I'm talking, <laughs> because I, I just always cringe when I hear my own voice for some reason. But um, and I thought that interview was going to be like a phone interview for uh, for a paper, not a video interview. <laughs> so I was on a construction site when that was videoed. But uh, I love the the first one and where like tides and treasures um, meet. I think that's uh, it, it, whoever wrote that is, is did a really good job. All right. So I think those videos did a really good job of kind of articulating and capturing you know, the, the, what Hulse Harbor is all about. I think what, uh, what we're here to do today is kind of talk a little bit more, a little more detail, but uh, keep it short. So, you know, Hulse Harbor um, is small, yet it's a very significant community in, in the County of Kings. Um, it's more than just a, a residential space, but also a hub of commercial and industrial activities. Um, it's mixed use makes it uh, a perfect represent representative of the maritime spirit. Moreover, it draws tourists from around the world, adding to its cultural rich richness. Um, Hulls Harbor annually attracts somewhere between 60 and 100,000 uh, tourists and visitors, which is pretty substantial. As you can see in this picture, um, Hulls Harbor is truly an iconic maritime community with its uh, world's tide, uh, highest tides and, uh, and fishing interaction with uh, with the harbor unfortunately though um, Hulls Harbor has been witnessing the adverse effects of climate change increased frequency and intensity of storms coupled with rising sea levels are posing threats to the harbor infrastructure including private and public properties and we are on a ticking clock to act to safeguard our beloved harbor uh, from the worsening effects of climate change and this picture was taken in February 2022 So in response, the Halls Harbor Community Development Association has been taking proactive steps. We've been working in collaboration with various stakeholders to develop strategic action plans. And our efforts so far have been focused on engaging diverse sectors and, and rallying support for our initiative. As we delve into this presentation, please keep in mind that this is not just about preserving the harbor, it's about preserving the community, its livelihoods, its rich cultural heritage, and supporting local businesses that continue to substanti uh, contribute substantially to the economy of the County of Kings and Nova Scotia. There are several local businesses there, for example, Needed Hands Massage Therapy, Two Birds and One Stone Farm, several tourist accommodations, and uh, the Halls Harbor Lobster Pound and Cameron Seafoods, amongst others. So this initiative is more is, is about ensuring um, that Halls Harbor that we love and cherish continues to thrive for the generations to come. So I think like most things, in order to know where we're going, I think we have to look back at where we came from. And so we look back and we find ourselves, uh, we want to have a quick look at the historical impacts of climate change on Halls Harbor. The most, or the first notable event took place in, in or around 1962. Uh, when a significant storm caused extensive damage to the west wharf. So that's the wharf on the lobster pound side of the harbor, where the last 150 feet were damaged and have never been rebuilt since. You know, fast forwarding uh, but to 2008, uh, we began to experience an increase in frequency in the impact of the damaging storms from Hurricane Earl, Hurricane Arthur, Winter Storm Grayson, Winter Storm Riley, Hurricane Dorian, tropical po or post tropical storm Teddy, and many more. And most recently, in February 2022, we were facing another major event that reminded us of the urgent need to address this ongoing issue. So for those who, who aren't familiar, this picture is of the, the causeway that would connect uh, the east and west sides of the harbor. So when it's flooded like that, uh, where, which is where the, the fresh water meets the seawater there at the causeway, um, you know, that would cut off access uh, to, you know, for emergency services, for school bus services, postal services, everything like that, um, to the western side of the, uh, of, of the harbor, or at least would create a, a pretty substantial detour. So 
So th thus far, our efforts have not been in vain. Uh, we've already gained significant uh, support for our cause. The HHCDA is hired Engineering by Houghton back in 2021 um, to you know, engage or to, I guess, lay out the groundwork for how to tackle a project like this. Um, and like any you know, good project or well-run project, I think the first step is stakeholder engagement. Um, all too often we hear about projects that have already been decided and voted upon and then we go to the public and we tell them what we're doing and then people get up in arms and they come out and, 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 you know, and want to know more information or, or become uh, um, you know, opposed to the project. So we wanted to get out in front of the community, find out what parts of the harbor that they like, uh, what they don't like, what's working, what needs to be done better and, uh, and kind of get, uh, get their feedback. So we did, we did, we did that and, um, and then created uh, the renderings which are at the back of the room. There's some pictures of them in this presentation, and you know through uh, through that stakeholder engagement, um, you know we also held an open house at the community center in Hulls Harbor where we presented it. And again, it's not a it's not a presentation of here's what we're doing. It's a presentation of the concept uh, and the intent of the project. But we were looking for for more feedback as people are typically visual. Once they started seeing the renderings, it, it you know they started getting uh, you know the proverbial juices flowing so to speak, and we got some really good feedback. So we've also, since uh, since this initiative has started, the HACDA has received letters of support from several key entities already, including the Office of the Minister of Economic Development for Nova Scotia, the MLA for Kings North, John Lohr's office, the Member of Parliament from King Hans, uh, Cody Blois's office, and several local businesses, such as Cameron Seafood and others. In 2022, we had uh, what we call a multi-sector you know, partnership um, coalition meetings, I guess. I can't, uh, can't remember exactly what we called it, but it was essentially we wanted to get in front of not only the private landowners, but the local business owners, all levels of government, federal and provincially, and just kind of get this presentation in front of them and, and start to get their input on the project and, and, and gain their support. So on the screen in front of you, I know it's kind of small, but this is a list of the, of the, of the different provincial and federal entities that we, and, and private landowners that we have uh, been in, in conversations with and have engaged so far, you know, to talk about this initiative, um, because one of the one of the complicated things about Hulls Harbor is that there is so many different user groups that not one particular person or entity has a significant amount of the uh, of the interest in the project. So um, right now, it's it's about trying to get everyone together in the same room at the same time and 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 talking, you know, collectively about how each one of them can can pull their weight to make this project a reality. So the path forward, although uh, this is quite a truncated version of the path forward based on the timeline we have here today, um, the first phase of our project was, goes back to where it originated, and that's a, uh, you know, a, um, a strengthening of the harbor's uh, seawall. So what you see in the video, uh, we want to build infrastructure, you know, with the future in mind, and, and we so now in the engineering industry, we're engineering these these marine projects for the year 2100. So we model the, the sea level rise and wave run up and, and storm surge. And so one of the things we have to do is we have to get the wall a lot higher. And and by a lot higher, I mean at least probably six feet, six to eight feet higher without, without doing all the math. And so we don't want to create just a, a wall around Hulls Harbor or else it's just going to lose this entire purpose and, uh, and feel. So to get the wall higher, we're, we're proposing pushing the parking lot and the seawall out farther so that we can kind of come out and up at the same time to achieve the height. Um, and by doing so, we also gain additional space for, uh, for the community to use, which I'll touch on in a second. Secondly, we aim to protect the shoreline of the wharfs with the installation of uh, engineered breakwaters and groins and shoreline protection measures. Um, the dam you know, how these wharfs are, are proposed in this picture uh, was something that was actually proposed by one of the fishermen uh, when we did our stakeholder engagement about how the, the inner harbor needs to be better protected against uh, storms from certain directions. And again, you know, the, the purpose of having two kind of parallel um, groins or breakwaters is, uh, is to help in, you know, prevent the fine migration of the sediments from the beaches and shorelines nearby from uh, infilling the shipping channel, which is, which is currently happening and has to be um, dredged via excavator you know, a couple times a year. <laughs> 
And this goes into the, you know, if the purpose of extending the space to get the seawall higher, we're now going to have, there'll be more land available and we want to use that land to help enhance the community and visitor space. And we envision a harbor where the local tourists can relax, work and enjoy the stunning views of Hulls Harbor has to offer. I know as a, as a child when I, my parents used to take us over, uh, over the mountain when it was really hot down here in the valley, we'd go get ice cream and then we'd sit on the, on the parking lot behind the lobster pound uh, and watch the water or the, or the sunset. Uh, we don't want to remove. We don't want to build a wall that prevents that from happening. I think that's part of the the charm that Hulls Harbor is 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 being able to come down and interact with the ocean, interact with the with the sunsets and the views. Furthermore, we're looking to expand uh, the shipping channel for easier navigation, including enhanced boat mooring facilities to support the local fishing industry. Uh, we've heard from from the fishery uh, the fishermen in Hulls Harbor and also from Digby that there's a lack of uh, mooring facilities in Nova Scotia. Uh, so again, just kind of adding another layer uh, to the onion, so to speak, if we're going to go through this work um, and the extensive efforts and engineering required, we, we should look at um, building for the future and, and making sure that the facilities can, can moor the larger boats and more of them. And we'll, we'll call it, uh, we'll call it lastly, but it's, it, there's a lot of other pieces to this that I, I just didn't touch on today, but we also aim to improve the, um, the access to the Bay of Fundy for recreational facility or recreational activities, allowing everyone to experience the beauty of our harbor. Um, these measures, all these measures combined, um, ensure that we're not only protecting Hulls Harbor, but we're enhancing it for future generations. So with that, uh, Mayor, Deputy Mayor and Council, uh, I want to thank you very much for taking the time to listen to our presentation today. Uh, we are truly passionate about this cause and we appreciate your interest and support. And uh, with that, I'm happy to take any questions and I've got a, a panel of experts behind me in every category, hopefully you can imagine, that will, uh, that will help, uh, help me with any of the questions you may have. We have a few questions. Uh, you're lucky to have such a, a good support team behind you there. Yeah, they're, they're <laughs> phenomenal. <laughs> um, Councillor Granger, go ahead. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you for your presentation this morning. Um, I just have a couple of questions. Uh, wondering how many people live in Hulls Harbor full time? That's a great question. Dave, do you know? Um, this is why I bring experts with me. When we, people that live there. <laughs> when we refer to Hulls Harbor, we, we look at the entire fire district. Okay. And there's probably between, I'm not sure exactly, I, I know I got the numbers from the county here at one time, I think it's approximately 500, three to 500 people. And that takes in, when we say Hulls Harbor, we, I want to make it really clear that it is the entire uh, fire district. And it goes, okay, thank you. Thank you. And uh, I'm wondering if there is anywhere else in the world that would be comparable. I mean, I, I know we have the highest tides in the world, but if there is somewhere else in the world that has a comparable area, what they do and what new technologies they're using. Um, through you, Deputy, that's a really good question. Uh, I like to believe that there's not too many places in the world that are exactly like this. Our tides obviously introduce a challenge that a lot of other communities don't have, but we don't have to look very far to see comparables with some of the other components in terms of uh, the picturesque multi-use facilities uh, just, just on the other side of, of the province, um, you know, in and around the, the Mahone Bay and, and Chester area, um, up in Cape Breton with, with Mabu Harbor, uh, very similar uh, multi-use harbors. Um, the, the interesting reality is, at least from, from a Nova Scotia perspective and Canadian background that I'm aware of, and, uh, and maybe Glenn Bessex from Acadia could, could comment, but the, a lot of people are facing these same challenges at the exact same time, and we haven't, there hasn't been a well-established you know, fix yet. And so unique opportunity for Hulls Harbor and the County of Kings to, to be a leader in that way and, and pave, the, pave the path forward for other communities that are having the same challenges. Not sure if that answered your question or not, but not really. But thanks. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank thanks. you. That's everything. Thanks, Councillor uh, Councillor Armstrong. Uh, thank you. Uh, welcome. Uh, it's uh, inspiring to see a community that's so invested and passionate. Um, I do have one question, though. You showed a picture earlier um, of um, February of 2022, where the road flooded, and you were talking about the fact that it cuts off certain portions of the community, and 
I love all the pictures and you know I understand what you're saying about extending the breakwaters and all that but it's not going to stop the height of the tides you know you're sort of mitigating the fact that you know you're allowing for them to go higher but I didn't see anything where you're going to stop like are you talking about raising the road Raising the road, raising the road is definitely part of the the, the concept yeah. plan. I, yes. I mean, I didn't see that here. I, you know, I saw the the breakwaters and all that stuff. Yep. And you know, flooding over the roadway would seem to me to be something that would be top of mind when yeah, you're that, making these plans. Through you, uh, deputy, to the councilor, the that's a, a very good point, and and the the whole. Even if we can, you know, it lessen the impact of the waves so that the damage isn't as much. Yeah, the water height is going to be what the water height is going to be, mm -hmm. um, and so part of you know the adaptation plan is is doing the all the the engineering and surveying to find out where that height of the water is projected to be, and then looking at all and doing a condition assessment of all of the infrastructure that is below that elevation, and and coming up with uh, you know remedial plans to either raise it, relocate it, etc. Um, for that causeway it has a couple of interesting components to it. Uh, one, there's a sluice gate that's in that's installed in it right now that's used by the by the Harbor Authority as a dredging mechanism. Super super cool, uh, old school technology, uh, but that works effectively when it's when the sluice gate is working. That, is my understanding, is not working effectively, and so that would need to be replaced uh, and upgraded to something um, you know that that works. Um, so at the same token, uh, we've been in conversations with uh, Nova Scotia uh, Department of Public Works. Did they? Did they just change their name? That's, you, that's you nailed the correct it. name now. You nailed it. Okay, I knew that they. Anyway, <laughs> so they, uh, you know, th that's their road, um, and so as part of what we will call the disaster mitigation adaptation strategy, would be working with the province of Nova Scotia and Public Works to to get that road. Um, raised, you know, and, and of course that comes with a whole bunch of challenges uh, that I don't have uh, all the answers to, but, um, you know, the, we do have topography on our side. It's just there's some, pre there's some residential properties that we would have to figure out the best way to make sure we can maintain access to them while we raise the, you know, with a, with a higher road. And I suppose there's no option to dredge it out to make it deeper this way instead of raising the road this way. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, yeah, it doesn't. It it isn't a function of the depth of the of the channel. It's it's just a it's just the site the height of the of the high tides. And what happens in that particular location right at that road is uh, we've got fresh water tributary. There's a large uh, tributary area that drains the fresh water from from a large portion of the North Mountain right through there. Um, and so during big rain events, when even even if we don't have a major you know nautical storm out at sea that causes storm surge we have if we have high tide combined with a major rain event where we've got you know higher intensity storms you know increasing the time of con or decreasing the time of concentration increasing the peak flow to that point at a, at a high tide the road can be inundated with uh with, so with you're basically getting it fresh from both sides is what you're saying essentially you can get the you can get it from both sides yes okay and so that road it. is, a, is a, piece, a critical piece of infrastructure that is part of the overall strategy and mm. discussions with uh, with all the stakeholders to, to make sure that that is um, upgraded okay. with this project. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, Mayor Mattart, you have the floor. Thank you. Thank you for your presentation. Thank you, Deputy. A uh, couple of short snappers, but just say pass if I if I'm asking <laughs> the wrong question, and you can get back to me later, perhaps. Uh, the total cost in $23? Well, I can answer that question in $22. Is that good enough? Uh, It'll have to do, won't it? <laughs> I don't know what $23 are yet. Everything's kind of gone haywire in yeah. 2023. Uh, in 2022 dollars, the projected cost is around $20 million. Mm -hmm. And that is, you know, uh, not, that is all components, including the road raising and a lot of the stuff I didn't talk about today. But there's a lot of components between the seawall, the breakwaters, the wharf extensions, the sluice sure. gate. There's an incredible opportunity to, to try to implement tidal power um, generation opportunities into the new construction. Um, and so our budget is, is, you know, in 2022 was around, was $20 million thereabouts, uh, and it included, you know, a budget for every component of the project. Thank you. Um, so we're talking about doing infill as well as. Uh as heightening some features, right? Has there been any study done regarding the impact of the infill on the on the balance of the shoreline there? 
Well, that's a good question. That came up at the Obit House as well. Some of the residents had concern about when you start introducing, there's a, you know, for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction theory. Um, so as part of the engineering process and the detailed design, when, you, when the marine engineers are involved, is they, they do model that. And so they model the existing conditions, you know, up and down the shorelines. Um, I'm not too sure to what range. And then they model the post-development uh, conditions. And, they, and, and analyze if, 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 we, if we do something over here, is that going to have an adverse effect over there? I don't know the answer to that just because we haven't, that engineering hasn't been done, but that is part of the, uh, the due diligence that's done in the engineering process. And the last one, if I may, Deputy, uh, what are the current number of boats, fishing boats or, and otherwise, using the facility and uh, what will this do in terms of increasing the capacity? Um, admittedly, I can't comment on the on the exact number unless somebody here knows. Madonna knows. She she knows. I was I was looking around to see if anyone was here from the Lobster Pound. Um, I thought Roger might be here, but I think he had the flu this week. Um, according to what I understand through meetings, um, the boats are getting bigger and bigger, and, as, and, and I guess there is a lack of mooring in Nova Scotia. Um, there could be as many as, well, there's probably only three or four or two, I don't know how many as active. At any one time, sometimes people from Scotts Bay come over or they're coming up from Harborville or, or that area, but I think the future is going to see a lot more um, with the export businesses there, more boats coming in. So. A lot, of, a lot of the questions are as we go along, so I'm really not sure. Um, I would rather have the harbor, um, the lobster pound, because th that's the business that is going to be causing the increase in uh, larger, larger uh, vessels coming in. Does that make sense? That all makes sense, but the, 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 the nub of the question was, what's the capacity for boats right now compared I would to what the new capacity will be? Bernard says he, wants, he knows the answer. Okay, maybe Bernard knows. <laughs> Madam Chair, Mr. Mayor, uh, ladies and gentlemen of council, I don't need that, my voice is loud enough. Actually, uh, it's so we can actually hear online. Oh, okay, yeah. sorry about that. No, okay. um, I'll try not to be too loud then. It's okay. Um, Field of Dreams, if you build it, they will come. Right now, we are at capacity for commercial fishermen. Uh, in my other life, I work for a number of commercial fishing families that fish out of Digby, that fish out of Harborville. They would love to be able to tie up at Halls Harbor, but there's no capacity. So what we're trying to do is increase the economic viability of that harbor by creating more spaces for commercial fishermen to tie up. So that's the, the first part. But the second part is the recreational part, which will allow more access to the bay uh, creating more again the, the key part of this whole project is we're coming to you to a we're asking for money let's let's be honest we want money we want you to write a check but the leverage that's going to come out of every dollar that you put into this project through the commitments that we're receiving from the province and from the feds at various levels for various programs that we're addressing in this comprehensive program is going to create an impact that the little bit that we're asking for Kings County will be leveraged so greatly that, you know, we're, we don't want 20 million from you, but we're going to do a 20 million project because of the small amount that you contribute. So we have to build this with the, the, the idea that we are building something for the future. And, and we have to have that faith, that belief that if we build it, they will come. And we know they'll come. Does that answer your question, Gordon? No. no. <laughs> you want exact numbers? So, I can't tell you. So, no, no. Tell you I, I just know of six I, I want relative, even relative numbers. But if you don't have them today, I, I can get them later. The issue, the question is, like, do you have capacity for five boats now, and you will in the future, Currently when this is done, have capacity for twenty boats? What, what's, what's Currently, the there's a, four boats that fish out of the harbor, I believe, and we're looking for capacity for ten. I think the renderings give us ten. Yeah. So we're looking to more than double the capacity there. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions on that? Thank you very much. All right, I'll, just, you. I'll just add, and Madonna touched on it quickly, um, the, the number of boats is one thing. Uh, the, yeah, the, having the parallel wharfs and the, the parallel breakwaters uh, allows boat, boats to moor on the western um, wharf, where currently that, that wharf is the one that's, that's there now that sticks out into the harbor, and it's not, they're not protected. So they can come in and they can stay there short term, but they can't stay there overnight. 
uh, or, or in the event of a storm. So by adding the second wharf, we can then moor them overnight. So that would there'd be the berth there for five more boats. But more, I think just as important is that, like when Halls Harbor originally was constructed, the average fishing boat width was 15 feet. Now those fishing boats are 30 feet and going upwards of 45 feet in some cases. So if one of those wider boats were to moor at the western wharf, it would cut off the access to the inner harbor. So it's, it's, a, it's a combination of adding vessels, but also adding uh, width to accommodate the newer and, and more modern vessels. If I may just add something I think is really important too. Um, the fishermen, when we were talking about the long-term plans, said we need, to, we need to make the channel wider. Right now, they, they spend thousands of dollars every year because they're not able to get their boats out of the channel because it's too narrow in the winter time. So their, their plan, hopefully our current uh, fisher people, is that in the winter time they'll be able to use the new one and get their boat, the boats out of the water so that way they won't be paying thousands, tens of thousands of dollars um, for damage that might have been done through storms etc in the water so a big part of that will be um, fishing boats will be able to have their boats out of the water during the winter months that's helpful thank you thank you um, councillor harding um, through you, Deputy Mayor, um, this is just a statement. I, I did not realize, and many people out there do not realize that you know the effects on the community and climate change. And just to look at the screen and look at those pictures, your community needs help. And uh, I'm just I'm lost for words uh, um, because because of climate change, we're we're going to be facing some big problems here in the next few years, and, and I know that. So uh, I just thank you for you people taking the stand and moving forward on this, and uh, I congratulate you on this. So thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Granger. Thank you, Madam Chair. Me again. Um, just wanted to ask about the 20 million. That's kind of just the opener. So there's obviously going to be maintenance, repair that's ongoing um, and unforeseen most of the time. That more damage gets done when it's not predicted. Um, Mother Nature usually wins at her game. So I'm just wondering how uh, going forward, how would the community once, let's say we're all we got all the rocks up, we're doing all the thing, it's all protected. Um, how does the community plan going forward to maintain and repair this? Well, uh, through you, Deputy, to the Councillor, that's a, an, another really good question. Um, and it's, it's a complicated answer in sorts, mostly because every there's different components of this project of different owners. So portion of the wharf uh, that's there now is owned and maintained by Small Craft Harbors, which is a uh, an entity from uh, Fisheries and Oceans Canada. Uh, we've got another wharf that's owned and maintained and operated by the HHCDA. Um, we've got private entities in there, you know, uh, the seafood exporter and, and the restaurant and then other commercial businesses that are down there as well. Um, and so there is an obligation from each individual uh, stakeholder, um, you know, to to be involved in the project, both, you know, in the capital investment and in the ongoing maintenance component. Uh, that said, uh, we feel that with, you know, proper proper engineering based on the, the best information that we have now and, and afforded the proper budgets that we can build um, infrastructure that will not have an increase to the net operating costs of each of those entities. Um, and the reality is, is that, you know, we, like I said, we're, we're on a ticking clock right now of sorts that if we have another major event uh, happen, the cost to repair that causeway, that the cost for small craft harbors to rebuild that wharf, um, the the risk that if Cambridge Seafoods gets damaged again substantially, you know that they may reevaluate where they're located uh, is is real. And so, part of the the due diligence and the engineering process that we go through in projects like this of any size is is looking at the um, the life cycle costing of that project. Um, we we see it a lot, honestly, uh, provincially and federally at least, where ca you know the capital dollars are flowing. Um, ribbons are cut, posters are put up, and social media posts, uh, but the money to maintain the products that are built after the fact isn't there. Um, in this particular case, we're looking to build low maintenance uh, infrastructure, um, you know, and, and our goal is to increase the economic viability of Hulls Harbor to the point where it, it does not have a net increase in the operating costs long term. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. 
Councillor Armstrong, then Councillor Kellum. Um, just one quick question. Um, a lot of the conversation today has been about uh, Fisher people. <laughs> we won't be male or female, but anyway, and, and I understand that that's the bread and butter of, of Halls Harbor. But once your project is finished, is there an opportunity there to allow recreational boats to come in? You know, I mean, you, you encourage um, tourists with, you know, your videos and, and the, the things that you offer in Halls Harbor. Um, what about getting them off the water? You know what I mean? Like, instead of having them come in cars, if they come up the bay, can they, will they have an opportunity to moor there and visit Halls Harbor? Or are these strictly moorings for fi uh, commercial fishermen? Uh, through you, Deputy, to the Councillor, that's uh, another, another awesome question. I appreciate it. Um, if you guys are okay, I can run with it. But I'll, before Madonna takes the mic, I'll, I'll add that as part of the project, we've contemplated access for both uh, recreational you know, activities such as, as kayaking and whatnot that would be accessible through the Inner Harbor on the, uh, on the Eastern Wharf, or what we call the, the Lighthouse Wharf. Uh, we've also contemplated a new boat launch um, that will give uh, recreational vehicles and emergency vehicles better access to the water. But uh, any, you know, like anything on the Bay of Funday where the world's highest tides are, there's a tipping point to the, the, the capital investment to get you into the water. Like, you know, the boat launches and the, and the wharfs would have to go out a lot farther than we projected them to go to be able to be in water all the time. Um, so there is going to be always limitations that way. But with the increased length, uh, with the better bo uh, boat launch access, you know, access, with the floating docks for, you know, sea, kayak, uh, sea kayakers and, and, and other um, recreational activities, there will be better access in the future for those. But uh, it still will, you know, be a challenge to, to have coming and going visitors who will just have to navigate, you know, the timing with the, with the tides. I'll let Madonna add. Well, actually, I think you, you did a better job than I would have done during you. But one of the things we do want to, is to encourage people to come and enjoy the Bay of Fundy. Um, for too long, it's been New Brunswick's Bay of Fundy, so it's time um, to look at Nova Scotia. And, and um, one of the things on the east side that um, Daniel mentioned, I think is important to say, there's going to be an area there um, for swimming as well. Uh, and also, the whole project uh, for the accessibility issue is all going to be wheelchair accessible. You're going to see all the, all, all the boardwalks will be wheelchair accessible. On the Lighthouse Wharf, um, our, our vision is to have um, um, fishing abilities for people in wheelchairs, to, to have the chairs there, etc. And it's all sort of depending, everything will depend on how far different level of governments will allow us to go. This is our dream, this is our vision. Now we're into the reality. We've met with all the, all the stakeholders, as Daniel mentioned, and thank you for your comments. That's the same we heard from the province and the feds. Now we wanted to make sure the county knew everything, and we're not asking you for any money today, so that's out of the question, we're not. We want you to be aware. We want you to be aware that we, are, we as a community, we have a fundraising team, um, we have social media, we have commitments already. We're asking for five-year commitments from a number of, of individuals, and um, so it's all—it's—it's it's not going to be twenty million dollars today or tomorrow. This is project's probably going to take three to five years, so it's one step at a time. And what what you see here is the vision and the dream, and we will go with that. And I I do know I want to tell you, Mr. Mayor, I got a couple of phone calls from a CBC um, story they did on Halls Harbor, one from Gabarus, one from. Uh, New Brunswick and one from somewhere else up in Cape Breton and they said how do you people you guys in Kings County really get do a lot of stuff can you help us get our place going and I said well first of all you have to have a council that sees the big picture you have to have a council that's out there that says hey you know this is a good project this has to be good for everybody not just each small little community and I want to make something else I have to say this I have the opportunity I can't miss it um, we, a group of us on the North Mountain, have been having meetings and tourism think tanks. I was on the STAR committee with the Valley Regional Run, so I know the importance of having small little destinations. We're looking at eventually having the North Mountain destination, where Harborville, Morden, Halls Harbor, Scotts Bay, where we can speak as one voice as the uh, North, North Mountain, it's a long process, and uh, we're working on that. But I just wanted to let you know that 
each community on the, on the Bay of Fundy that, that I know the province wants to get action on, um, pretty much is in, is in Kings County. And all those little communities, all of us, uh, by working together, I think we can ensure that our roads get better, that we have better, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Thank you. I promise I won't get up again, but sorry. It's perfectly fine. We're perfectly Deputy Mayor, happy. I a follow up? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Um, I, I appreciate everything you said, and I have a little place in Annapolis. It's okay. I just, <laughs> I just, I just summer there. Um, but it's on the Annapolis River and I watch boats, recreational boats, sailboats and, and the such, and they go up the river um, and they hit Annapolis Royal and they moor at the wharf and they, you know, eat in Annapolis Royal, they buy in Annapolis Royal, and then, you know, at the end of the day, they go back out with the tide. And that's the type of thing that I was wondering if you're going to, not so much launching boats or anything like that, but putting an opportunity there for people to access Halls Harbor rather than by driving, but by boat. And okay. be able to just come in for the day, you know, have a place that they can tie their boat up and then access all, everything that Halls Harbor has to offer and then get on their boat and head out. And then maybe at, at some point they'll go to Harborville or they'll go to Morden or, you know, that type, that, that's sort of the mindset that I had. Okay, through you, Deputy, I, to the Councillor, I, I can elaborate in the harbor currently there is uh like recreational boat boaters that moor there and keep their boats there seasonally um to bernard's point earlier it's at capacity uh so there's the fishing vessels but there's also recreational floating docks that are there uh i'm just gonna i'm totally guessing but somewhere between probably 12 and 15 um like you know small crafts are are moored there permanently or, or seasonally sorry so as part of the you know redevelopment here by opening up the harbor with uh we'd be looking to increase that floating dock capacity um by utilizing the like the reimagined eastern wharf or what we call as the lighthouse wharf so having that floating dock will allow small crafts to come in you know mindful of the tides of course because if they wait too long they'll be sitting on the ocean floor but it's uh that that there, there will be increased capacity there that, that already exists now but because it's a capacity for it's not it's not something we can advertise as an option because people can come in there'll be no place to to uh to dock because the the docks are all being utilized by the uh, by the current you know uh, tenants so to speak i guess so all of those we will we want to increase the capacity of uh, of recreational and and you know all all water activities the best we can at the same time as increase the you know the capacity of the industrial portion of this which is the fishery and the seafood exporter and it's important to note like Halls Harbor like I mentioned at the beginning is a multi-sector use place it's a very unique uh, combination of things where it isn't just a community of residents that you know are, are seeing the the infrastructure going to disrepair it's it's actively used by um, you know by the fishing industry um, and they're you know they're a, a big player um, and so it's a unique challenge to try to you know better and improve their you know their use of the of the area with the oat turning it into you know a, a major fishing hub where uh, you know the tourism component and the and the charm to the local uh, residents is lost so but you know it would certainly uh, be part of our plan and, and we've got that contemplated through that uh, additional floating wharf system I don't know if that's a better answer uh, but yes all right thank you and for our final question because uh, we're getting short on our time here um, Councillor Killam, go ahead. Close to your heart, I know. Uh, <laughs> thank you, Deputy Mayor. I, I did want to uh, just review the uh, whole concept of conflict, and uh, I had to wrestle with that a little bit, but I don't call myself in conflict. I call myself in love with Halls Harbor, <laughs> and uh, I'm so glad to see uh, so many people here today from the harbor, and uh, welcome. Um, I just wanted to touch a little bit about the uh, the uh, entrance to the harbor and the issue around uh, having to have it cleaned out because of the silt buildup. Uh, every storm brings silt in there and there's several thousand dollars every year is necessary to keep that harbor open uh, beyond all the other issues uh, just to have fishing boats come in and out and uh, it's uh, becoming more frequent all the time. 
just wanted to let you know too that we had a visit from the Blue Nose too last summer and uh, people are quite uh, recognizing our harbor for a, a nice visit and uh, as, as also mentioned before that we've had uh, probably uh, anywhere from 50 to 80,000 people that visit Hulls Harbor every year. So uh, the tourism is extremely important to not only the harbor but also to Kings County and the province. So um, I just wanted to mention those things and floating docks uh, are there for recreational uh, boating and uh, it's, it's a popular activity. And, and as mentioned also, the accessibility is the, in the plan for recreation and, and uh, everybody enjoying the harbor in the future. But uh, I guess I could go on. I've, I've photographed all the storms since 1973, so anybody wants to have a look at what damage can be done and, and the intensity of the storms over the years, uh, I have that documented, so I'll leave it there. Thanks, Councillor. Yes, sir. Deputy Mayor, if I may. Yes. My name is Stephen Healy, and like Dick, I'm in love with Halls Harbor. Um, I'm at that age now in my life where I find myself listening to CBC Radio, and one day I was listening to an interview that was being done with a professor of something. And he was talking about the impact of tourism on the Bay of Fundy. And he mentioned that the area, and I'll say in Priorsboro, where they do the fossil research around to an area like the Bay of Fundy, uh, so, sorry, Halls Harbor, <coughs> excuse me, the Bay of Fundy has the opportunity, the potential to attract as much tourism to that area as what they get in Peggy's Cove. And I found that very, very interesting. And recently, as you probably all know, uh, the Lobster Pound has opened up and I spent my, uh, uh, a little bit of time last weekend there uh, talking to some of the folks. And they told me that uh, because of COVID, for the last number of years, they haven't had a lot of buses in, but this year they're expecting an above average number of buses because of the, the uh, cruise ship industry in Halifax. And that this is one area that the County of Kings can work on to try to attract more and more and more of these people. So thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Healy. All right, I'll just, I'll, I guess, that We'll end it at that. So to you, uh, Deputy and Mayor and Council, I just wanted to say thank you very much for uh, giving us as much time as you have this morning and uh, listening to our story and um, look forward to uh, coming back and making a presentation to you again in the future. Thank you so much for thank being you. here. I am sufficiently hungry for lobster. Um, <laughs> and the best in the world. excited to get my kayak strapped to my van and, and bring it up. Great, thank um, you very much. Really appreciate you all coming out today. We are all very, you're all very lucky to live in Halls Harbor, but additionally, we are all very lucky to have Halls Harbor as part of our county and our community. So really, thank you so much for the care that you show um, for your community, for coming out today, and for sharing a little bit of that love with us. Although we do get it from Councillor Killam all the time, so uh, don't worry. <laughs> um, I think at this time we'll take maybe a five-minute break to get uh, refreshing coffees and, and allow you folks to, to exit if you wish. And uh, again, thank you so much. So five-minute recess, five to ten. And oh, we'll have a motion to receive the presentation moved by Councillor Granger, seconded by Councillor Killam. All in favor, before you leave your seats, please uh, vote now. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. And the motion carries. Thank you.
call the meeting back to order. Thank you for those of you who are who have joined us. Our audience is a little smaller. Um, we're on item eight this morning. Financial services. We're beginning with a village of Canning temporary boring guarantee resolution. Uh, Mike Livingston is here with us this morning. Welcome, Mike, to Council Committee of the Whole. Thank you very much. I'll dive right in. Uh, the intent of the presentation is uh, to follow up on the fact that the Village of Canning has requested that the municipality approve a guarantee resolution in the amount of $1,150,000. The purpose of the Village's borrowing is to purchase a new tanker slash pumper fire truck to replace their existing uh, truck from 1996. Uh, the village has received approval to borrow from a special meeting of their electors and uh, it was on May 2nd and then their commission approved the temporary borrowing resolution on May 9th. The financial implications associated with the uh, guarantee resolution are that there are none except for in the case that the village could default on the loan in which case us as the, the guaranteeing party would be responsible for the remaining outstanding balance uh, and then just wanted to make reference to the fact that currently the municipality's guarantees aren't factored into uh, the provincial financial condition indicator calculations and they don't impact our ability to borrow for our own purposes. And with that all, the recommendation would be that Committee of the Whole recommend Municipal Council approve the Village Guarantee Resolution, I should probably say Village of Canning Guarantee Resolution in the amount of $1,150,000 in relation to the purchase of a new fire truck for the Canning and District Volunteer Fire Department and attached as Appendix A to this May 16th, 2023 request for decision be happy to take any questions you have on the matter. Wonderful. Any questions? Councillor Armstrong. Oh, sorry, just one second. What? Oh, you're good. Yep. Uh, is that the full purchase price? Oh, gosh, sorry. I hit something and then everything turned off. Okay, go ahead. That is my understanding. Um, but they have it. I'm assuming they have an area rate for capital, so they're not putting in any of their area rate for capital. There was no indication that there would be. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Um, oh, okay, that's what that does. Um, any other questions? Okay, seeing none, Mr. Livingston was kind enough to read the motion. Do I have a mover of it? Moved by Councillor Allen, seconded by Councillor Harding. Discussion on the motion. Seeing none, all in favor or otherwise, please signify in the usual fashion. The motion carries. Thank you. Um, item nine, other business. Is there any other business to come before the meeting? We are going in camera. We will be coming out of camera before adjourning this session of Committee of the Whole to begin our next meeting of special counsel. So. Uh, any other business? Seeing none, uh, and there are no comments from the public, I would look for a motion to move in camera. Moved by Councillor Killam, seconded by Councillor Allen. Thank you very much. Discussion on the motion? Seeing none, all in favor or otherwise, please signify now. The motion carries. Um, we'll wait for a thumbs up from the clerk to let us know when we are offline.
Brown, seconded by Mayor Matart. Discussion on the motion. Seeing none, all in favor or otherwise, please signify in the usual fashion. Uh, we have six in favor and one against, and the motion carries. Thank you very much. Um, at this point, I would entertain a motion to adjourn, at which point we'll be moving directly into a special council. So can I have a motion to adjourn? Moved by Councillor Allen. Seconded by Councillor Killam. All in favor or otherwise, please signify now. And we'll give the clerk one moment to switch the system, and we'll wait for the thumbs up before we go live with our next meeting. The motion carries unanimously. We are adjourned. We're good? Okay. All right. It is still morning. Good morning. Welcome to the Municipality of the County of King Special Council Meeting of Tuesday, May 16th, 2023. We have wrapped up Committee of the Whole, and at this point, we are moving into a special council. I'll begin this morning by taking roll call. We have two councillors absent from our mids this morning, um, and I'll entertain a motion to excuse those councillors once we've passed roll call. Uh, we are all here. Councillor Allen is also here. <laughs> you weren't indicated not being here. Uh, could I have a motion to excuse Councillor Hurdle and Councillor Meisner today? Moved by Councillor Killam, seconded by Councillor Granger. All in favor or otherwise, please signify in the usual fashion. Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Uh, looking for a motion to approve the agenda of the special council. Moved by Councillor Armstrong. Seconded by Councillor Allen. Thank you. Discussion on the motion? Seeing none, all in favor or otherwise, please signify in the usual fashion. Motion carries unanimously, thank you. Are there any conflict of interest issues to be declared at this point in the agenda? Seeing none, we'll move to item four, recommendations from Committee of the Whole of today, May 16th, 2023. The first is the addition to reserve for Glues Cap First Nation. The motion is that Municipal Council direct the Mayor to respond to the correspondence from Indigenous Services Canada, expressing the complete support of the Municipality of the County of Kings for the proposed addition to reserve. Mover of the motion. Councillor Armstrong, second by Councillor Killam. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor or otherwise, please indicate now. And as always, for the full presentation and discussion of these agenda items, you can refer to the earlier meeting of Committee of the Whole, which was held today, Tuesday, May 16th. Motion carried unanimously. Uh, item B, Village of Canning, Temporary Boring Guarantee Resolution. The motion reads that Municipal Council approve the Village Guarantee Resolution in the amount of $1,150,000 in relation to the purchase of a new fire truck for the Canning and District Volunteer Fire Department and attached as Appendix A to this May 16th, 2023 request for a decision. Move over the motion. Councillor Granger, seconded by Councillor Armstrong. Discussion on the motion. Seeing none, all in favor or otherwise, please signify in the usual fashion. Motion carried unanimously. Thank you, Council. And item C, Supplemental Budget and Prioritization of Sustainable Services Growth Fund. The motion is that Municipal Council approve a supplemental budget with incremental expenditures totaling $1,835,433 for Project 22-3403, financed through the Sustainable Services Growth Fund and including revised financial allocations of the $137,037 from long-term debt to Sustainable Services Growth Fund representing complete utilization of the awarded $1,972,470. I'll look for a mover of the motion before I take comment. Moved by 
I have a mover. Moved by Councillor Killam. Seconded by Councillor Allen. Thank you very much. The motion's on the floor. Councillor Armstrong. Um, this is more of a question. Oh, uh, that's okay. Um, um, number one, I don't think, I think that the motion should say what project 22-3403 is um, for the general public who might have an interest in that. And I was wondering if you could explain the included revised financing allocations. All right, well, like I'm, I'm, I'm assuming that's the difference between the 18, or the 1.8 and the 1.7. So can you explain the including revised financing allocations? You're right, is the difference between the, the total award and what's being uh, added as incremental project costs. The $137,000 is um, existing long-term debt in the AT, Active Transportation Project Sheet, which is 223403. Um, so that amount of long-term debt will not be drawn. We'll instead use the remaining balance of the SSGF fund to replace that long-term debt. So we're doing other things that we were going to borrow money for, and now we won't borrow the money because we'll use the balance. Yeah, the existing AT project elements. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Because sometimes we can say things that people won't understand, and I don't understand it. So I'm assuming that the people out there listening don't understand it. So, um, yeah. And I and I think there should be a description as to what we're using this money for, and that's not there. So thank you. Can we have the the name of the project, and is it just the active transportation? I believe it is called active transportation. Um, I can confirm. The project Maybe name. we could just friendly amendment at some point, like stick that in after the number in brackets. Yeah, uh, actor. I know, I understand that you know that you might not want to put too much in there, but active transportation is is a big bubble, and this is a very specific project within that bubble, and people might be interested in knowing what we are spending this money on. Um, and AT doesn't necessarily say that. So I, I have a problem with that. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Councillor. Um, did you wish to make an informal amendment? Oh, wait, Director Barr's got his light on. Hang on, well. Director Barr? Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Just to, to uh, highlight that the project number name is uh, Active Transportation Infrastructure is the name of the project. Active Transportation Infrastructure, of which a full description can be found in the capital budget sheets, Correct. project sheets. Okay. Uh, got your light. Hang on. There you go. But was this particular item listed in that AT plan within our capital budget. It obviously wasn't because this is supplemental. So the people that are going to be affected by these particular, these three projects may want to know what they are. And that's not in our budget. Uh, through you, uh, Deputy Mayor, to, to Councillor Armstrong, um, the intention is for us to update that project sheet to include the scope of these additional items um, contained with it in the approved budget. Okay. Okay. Anything further, Councillor? No. Okay. Mayor Matar. I'd uh, move to amend the motion sure. by insert inserting the words after project 22 3403 uh, in brackets the words road widening for pedestrian and cycling active transportation, close bracket. Unless someone feels that's contrary to the motion. Uh, I think that is probably a friendly amendment. Councillor Killam and Councillor Allen, are you comfortable with that? Okay. Uh, we'll just wait and pop it up on the screen if Yanni doesn't mind to make sure we've got it perfect. Does that 
address your concerns, Councilor Armstrong, for the most part, for the most part. Um, they'll also be able to reference, of course, the RFD that will become public. So, um, okay. Anything further on this motion? Happy to entertain any more amendments or questions. Okay, seeing none, it's been moved and seconded and amended. All in favor or otherwise, please indicate in the usual fashion. Motion carries unanimously. Thank you, Council. Our next item is item five, recommendation from Regional Sewer Committee, May 5th, 2023. Um, this was intended to be presented by Councilor Hurdle, but uh, in his absence, I I can do it. Um, but perhaps before we uh, move, to, would maybe would Mayor Matart like to give a brief um, report on how the, the meeting went the other night? Is this an appropriate time for you to? Oh, yes, I can. <clears throat> I can certainly do that. The um we had a, a special meeting with the citizens of uh, New Minus in order to hear their points of view with respect to the the uh, the clear interference with uh, quality of life in that area due to the odor that's uh, been emitting from the. Uh, from the uh, regional sewer. Uh, we took the opportunity uh, before opening the floor for comments uh, and with the assistance of all staff and in particular uh, Aaron Dondale who, who presented a slide presentation uh, showing the workings and explaining the issues and explaining the, the solutions and the cost of the solutions. Uh, it was clear to us that when, uh, first of all, it was clear to us it was absolutely necessary to, to have an open discussion with the community. Uh, the meeting was quite well attended. Uh, a lot of diverse points of view were heard. Uh, it, it's, it's clear that Nothing is going to solve the frustration experienced in the community until such time as the odor disappears. And uh, our effort in being there was to explain uh, how quickly that could happen and what had to be done to make it happen and uh, to give assurances that, it, uh, that, that we would be seeing an end to this but that unfortunately due to uh, a number of factors, including the uh, necessary desludging at the front end and uh, replacement of the aerators after desludging, there's some 510 or some aerators in the lagoon system and all of those existing once the desludging is done and the, and the uh, the lagoon is drained in cell one. All of those aerators that are in there now have to come out and they would have to be replaced. And that is, that's a big task. In addition to that, we would have to um, uh, deal with all the sludge that comes out of the, the system and uh, make arrangements to have that uh, distributed either to New Brunswick as we had in the past uh, or to find more local uh, areas where it can be received and the, and the purpose around that last part is is cost driven and as much as uh, transporting to New Brunswick is uh, adds a lot of fuel cost to the project when you consider the amount of sludge that has to be uh, taken out. And then, of course, it, uh, once having taken it all apart, you have to put it all back together and, uh, 
and the work that was necessary for that was explained. People understood. Doesn't make you any happier when you're living in the middle of the stink. Uh, uh, to have people explain why it stinks, because and and we told them out outright and up front that uh, we understood that that they it was no fun uh, experiencing this, and uh, we don't want it to happen again. So it's a major uh, cost undertaking. It was also explained that. Uh, because not that many people were aware that this sewer is managed by a, uh, an oversight and management committee comprised of the users of the system. And in, in the percentages, and that it's governed financially by uh, folks in the percentages that they use it, what capacity do they use, uh, and, and then combine that with the operational costs uh, for intake. And that breakdown was 15% uh, to Municipality of Kings, which is actually more than we use, but it's, we somehow got to that figure. We're exploring how we got to that figure. <clears throat> and 51% uh, to uh, the town of Kentville. And uh, Twelve and a half percent. The CAO will correct me here. Uh, the village of Numi twenty-one percent. The village of Numinus, and uh, some twelve percent uh, PepsiCo. So those are the partners of the system. Those are the proportions in which they would share the cost of remediation of the system. Um, we are formulating based on. Uh, uh, past experience and recommendations going forward, uh, uh, a maintenance program which will see us desludging uh, more often than we have in the past, and that will certainly go a long way, uh, we're told, to helping to correct the problem. So in summary, the, uh, the people at the uh, a meeting varying degrees of trust, as is often the case in circumstances like this, uh, that the, the, we really had the answer to the problem. Uh, there were others that uh, were very much on the, on the sympathetic toward our problem and appreciative of the fact that we were uh, addressing it and and even more appreciative of the fact that we've got people that work in and on that system eight hours a day, every day of the year, uh, working on these solutions. There, on the other hand, there are, there are business people that reside close, and there, there are uh, citizens that reside close, and uh, the enjoyment of the property is being interfered with. So the the people were respectful and we were appreciative of that respect and uh, hopefully everyone is uh, fully informed and that we are all moving forward on the same page. That's my report. Thank you. Thanks, Mayor. Uh, any questions for Mayor Matart on this particular file? Councilor Armstrong? Um, at the meeting, um, were the other partners in attendance, or was it just us answering questions? I, I should have mentioned that. I reached out to the other partners and, and suggested to them that they had, uh, that it would not be a good look if they weren't there, and I'm sure, and I was sure that they were interested in hearing the, the points of view of the community and understanding, and, and to take in an understanding of what it was these people were experiencing and how urgent the matter was, and they all had people in attendance. Thank you. Great question. Anything further for Mayor Matart? I would just echo the, the thanks for the staff who are really diligently working to address this. Um, they do not have an easy job, and we're very grateful for their efforts. Anything further? The motion reads that Municipal Council, oh, Councillor Kellum, go ahead. 
I'm sorry, I thought you were speaking of other business. Oh, that, not yet. We have to do up. the motion. Yeah, yeah we've got to do the motion. The Municipal Council provide approval to proceed with consulting and drafting of an NRFP, including cost estimates for an additional desludging contract related to cell one of the regional sewer system as detailed in the May 5th, 2023 request for decision to have a mover of the motion. Moved by Councillor Allen, seconded by Councillor Kellum, and debate, Councillor Armstrong. Um, it doesn't say this in this motion, but I'm assuming that the cost of this will be broken down into the percentages that the mayor brought up and that we're only agreeing to pay our 15%. Uh, Mr. CIO, do you That's know? That's correct. That's correct. Okay. Thank you. Councilor Harding, did you have? No. No, nope, you're okay. Okay. Anything further? Seeing no more lights, I'll call the question. All in favor or otherwise, please signify in the usual fashion. Motion carries unanimously. Thank you, Council. Light off. Okay. Item six, other business. Councilor Kellen. Uh, thank you, Deputy Mayor. Just wanted to uh, let Council know uh, I attended a uh, annual banquet for Greenwich on Saturday night. And they're celebrating their 90th year of operation, and I did give greetings from for on behalf of Council and our Mayor Tart. And uh, it was a it was a good evening, and uh, um, in attendance was also Cody Blois and uh, Keith Irving. Um, just wanted to comment that I think last year I attended, and they had uh, about 33 uh, uh, volunteers. This year they're up to 44, and they're all young people, and they're just good to see the the spirits alive there for volunteerism on on that on that end. So I uh, just want to pass that along. And one other, or maybe a couple other things I wanted to report. In Halls Harbor, we had a house fire, which uh, one of the, uh, the, uh, the husband got burnt quite badly. He was been in hospital. And um, uh, yeah, he's, he's mending, but uh, that was a uh, house was lost. Um, the other thing was we had another fire that uh, happened on the um, west side of the lobster pound up on the cliff area. And uh, it was started by a, a brush fire. And it, we, when the department got there, uh, we were able to stop it before it got into the real dry area, which could have been bad. The wind was uh, really strong that day. And Kentville came and assisted and uh, lands and force and it we got to extinguish. So, uh, but it's just an example of what what the conditions are like, uh, especially on the mountain, those areas. So, uh, that was a, a good news story. Get that stopped. But, but uh, yeah, I feel pretty bad. What the uh, owner of the house is a volunteer firefighter with Hall Harbor. So, uh, may be able to provide more information when I'm permitted. Yeah. Thank you. Well, thank you very much for your attendance and. Uh, at the banquet in Greenwich and uh, for giving us that update. Thank you. Anything further under other business? I see no public in attendance. And at this point, I would look for a motion to adjourn. Moved by Councilor Granger. Seconded by Councilor Granger. <laughs> Seconded by Councilor Harding. Thank you. Uh, all in favor or otherwise, please signify now. And uh, thank you for your participation. Thank you, staff, for all your hard work. And I hope you enjoy the rest of your Tuesday. Motion carried. We are adjourned. <laughs>